topic we have discussed about bacterial cell wall membrane and cytoplasmic matrix in this video we are starting with cell wall appendages okay so first we will discuss about here first we will discuss about capsule and slime layer what is this two are so some bacteria possess a layer of amorphous basic material lying outside the cell wall that is known as glycocalyx this is present outside the cell wall visit material amorphous material okay now when this glycocalyx layer is well organized and not easily washed off then it is known as capsule but when this glycocalyx is not well organized means in the form of in diffuse form not well organized then it is known as slime layer okay some bacteria may produce both capsule and slime layer one example is your streptococcus salivarius so streptococcus salivarius is a bacteria which possesses both that is capsule and slime layer both are present in a streptococcus salivarius okay no problem here clear okay now we will discuss some examples most of the bacterial capsules nature of the bacterial capsule most of the bacterial capsule are polysaccharide in nature most of the bacterial capsule are polysaccharide in nature except one or two are exception one exception is important that is bacillus anthracis bacillus anthracis in bacillus anthracis the capsule is polypeptide in nature okay in bacillus anthracis the capsule is of polypeptide nature clear capsule is also seen in some fungi one example i need to mention here that is cryptococcus neoformans cryptococcus neoformans is simple example of uh, that mm, mm, fungi which has capsule clear no problem now one more exception is there where the capsule is made of hyaluronic acid that is your streptococcus pyogenes okay streptococcus pyogenes so bacillus anthracis the capsule is of polypeptide nature cryptococcus neoformans cryptococcus neoformans is a fungi having capsule and streptococcus pyogenes have hyaluronic acid in their capsule clear but most important is bacillus anthracis okay now coming to the functions of the capsule and slime layer so function the capsule mainly will discuss the function of capsule so capsule have various functions the first one is it is uh, contributing to bacterial virulence okay it is contributing to bacterial virulence capsule protect the bacteria from phagocytosis it also prevent complement mediated bacterial cell lysis it also prevent cell from drying out it also protects the bacterium from action of lysozymes and bacteriophages so it is adding to bacterial virulence clear now the next function of capsule that capsule also act as source of nutrient and energy okay capsule can be a source of nutrient and energy to microbes one example i need to mention here is streptococcus mutans this streptococcus mutans colonizes teeth okay and ferment the sugar in the capsule and so formed by the fermenting the sugar it will lead to formation of acid by products and those acid by products causes tooth decay so streptococcus is responsible for tooth decay and this part is due to its capsule clear no problem here now the next function capsule also act as vaccine so capsules of few bacteria are antigenic and anti capsular antibodies are protective in nature hence capsular antigens of many bacteria are used as potential vaccine candidates clear now i need to mention some example here that is pneumococcus meningococcus as well as hemophilus influenza as sorry serotype b so capsular vaccines are available for this type of bacteria pneumococcus meningococcus and hemophilus influenzae type b so the first function is bacterial virulence then streptococcus mutans then the vaccine streptococcus mutans is not the function is example basically here bacteria is acting capsule is acting as source of nutrient and energy clear now so these are the three main functions of capsule now coming to the next point that is your demonstration of capsule how you will demonstrate the capsule so capsule can be directed by various method the first one is your negative staining which we have discussed in our staining part okay negative staining is done by india ink or you also use negrosin stain okay and capsule appears in after negative staining the capsule will appear as a clear refractile okay around the bacteria no problem and in this negative staining the bacteria and the background both appears black the bacteria and the background both will appear as a black now the next method is your m fidian capsule stain what is the name m fidian capsule stain clear uh, it is used for demonstration of capsule of mainly 
bacillus anthracis so for capsule of bacillus anthracis we use this stain it is m fadin capsule stain what is the name m fadin capsule stain is used for demonstration of the capsule of bacillus anthracis clear you may also undergo serological test you can also do serological test for knowing the capsule for demonstration of the capsule okay because capsule material is antigenic in nature and it can be demonstrated demonstrated by mixing it with the specific antibody specific mix serum okay so the first it was one by negative staining this is very important from mcq point of view m fadin capsule stain it is used for most famously used for bacillus anthracis clear one important point we have discussed about bacillus anthracis that it has capsule which is of polypeptide nature this is also important point clear no problem here. now how we will do serological test so i will mention here two types of two type two two points more the first one is coelung reaction okay coelung reaction so capsular serotypes of uh, mainly your streptococcus pneumoniae streptococcus pneumonia so capsular serotypes of streptococcus pneumonia can be detected by adding antisera which is mixed with methylene blue we are adding antisera and this antisera is mixed with methylene blue okay and after adding this capsule will become swollen refractile and delineated clear and this is known as coelung reaction so coelung reaction is used for capsular stereotyping in mainly streptococcus pneumonia in which we are adding antisera along with methylene blue okay methylene blue we are adding and then capsule the capsule will become swollen refractile clear now the second one is your you can also add you can also go for like this capsular antigen now capsule antigen can be directed in the sample such as csf by latex agglutination test by using a specific anti capsular antibodies coated on latex particle this is available for pneumococcus cryptococcus hemophilus influenza and meningococcus so this is all about your capsule and slime layer the next important is your which we are going to discuss here is your flagella okay now we are moving for flagella so flagella are thread like appendages that is protruding from cell wall okay and it conform motility to the bacteria so these are known as organ of locomotion organ of locomotion for bacteria it is acting at organ of locomotion for bacteria it is attached with its protruder from cell wall very important no problem here now they measure 5 to 20 micrometer in length and 0.01 to 0.02 micrometer in thickness no important no importance now coming to the arrangement of flagella so there are various pattern of arrangement of flagella with respect to bacteria surface the first one is monotrichus monotrichus that is one presence of only one flagella mono means one presence of only one flagella and the examples are vibrio cholerae pseudomonas and campylobacter so monotrichus condition is seen in vibrio cholerae pseudomonas and campylobacter the next one is your lophotrichus so this lophotrichus means multiple polar flagella okay like this this is the bacteria so one end there will be multiple flagella this is the condition of lopo trich lopo lopo trichus and you can you will find this in spirillum okay spirillum has lopo trichus condition the next one is your peri trichus the name itself suggesting peri means surrounding means in this the flagella will surround all over the bacteria this is the peri trichus condition and it is found in very important there is salmonella typhi so salmonella typhi and isteria coli these two have peritrichus lophotrichus in spirillum and your monotrichus in vibrio cholerae as well as pseudomonas okay and one more campylobacter spirillum salmonella typhi and e coli the next arrangement is amphitrichus okay the next is your amphitrichus so in this single flagella is present but at both end one here and one here single flagella is present at both end mp means both so one flagella is here and one flagella is here single flagella at both end and you will find mp trichus condition in alkaligenous fecalis okay alkaligenous fecalis so these are the arrangement of bacteria these are arrangement of flagella sorry one again i am revising you monotrichus in vibrio cholerae pseudomonas in campylobacter then you will see in lophotrichus okay it is found in spirillum then you have to see in petrotrichus very importantly found in salmonella typhi and as well as uh, estria coli and amphitrichus which is find found in alkaligenes and alkaligenes fecalis alkaligenes fecalis so this is the arrangement of flagella now we will go for ultra structure of flagella what is the ultra structure of flagella 
so electron microscope reveals that bacterial flagellum is composed of three parts bacterial flagellum is composed of three parts the first part is filament and it is the largest portion of the flagellum that extends from cell surface to the tip it is a hollow rigid cylinder made up of single protein that is important flagella filament is made up of flagellin protein so this is one important point here this is made up of flagellin protein here the next part is your basal body basal body so this is the portion of flagellum which is embedded in the cell it is the most complex part of the flagellum it is made up of two to four rings connected to a central pod very important rings rings uh, number of rings are different in your gram positive and gram negative bacteria so rings is very important which we will discuss here coming to the first gram negative bacteria so in gram negative bacteria there are four rings present there is a presence of four rings outer uh, rings are in outer layer and inner okay uh, outer side you will find ln p rings okay and the outer ln p rings are also associated with lipopolysaccharide and peptidoglycan layers respectively okay this l this l ring is associated with lipopolysaccharide and this p ring is associated with peptidoglycan so pp peptidoglycan p ring and ll l for lps inner inner is s ring okay inner s ring is in periplasmic space this is in periplasmic space and one more that is m ring so this m ring this m ring is uh, connect this m ring directly connect with plasma membrane so s ring is found in periplasmic space and m ring is directly in contact with plasma membrane so these are the four rings which are present in gram negative bacteria lnp outer rings inner rings are s and m and this l is with level and this p is for peptidoglycan layer and this inner s for periplasmic space and this m for plasma membrane here where when we will discuss about gram positive bacteria then gram positive has only two basal body rings that is and both are both are your inner that is s and m clear this s and m types of ring as present in gram positive bacteria the next part is your hook so this is about ultra structure of the flagella now we will move for detection of flagella how you will detect flagella so the next topic is detection of flagella so flagella can be demonstrated by two methods the first one is direct demonstration of flagella the second is indirect means okay so first we will discuss direct method direct demonstration of flagella so it can be done by tannic acid tannic acid staining okay that is also that is known as your lepson's method lepson's method and rios method so the first one is your tannic acid staining which is also known as Lepson's method and Rives method the next is your simple electron microscopy okay now coming to the indirect means indirect means is by demonstrating the motility we will say that uh, yes there is flagella so indirect methods is by the first one is your craggy tube method craggy tube method okay the second one is your hanging drop method third one is your semi solid medium by using semi solid medium we can demonstrate motility of flagella semi solid medium such as mannitol medium which is also known as mannitol motility medium we will look for motility of the flagella in this medium okay so these are the indirect measures so direct method is by tannic acid staining very important tannic acid staining which is also known as Lepson's method or Rios method then electron microscopy this is important from mcq point of view then semi solid craggy's tube method and hanging drop method clear now we will look for bacterial motility so bacteria can produce characteristic type of motility which helps in their identification so we will discuss those types of motility so the first one is your so we will look for bacterial motility so if there is tumbling type of motility then the bacteria will be listeria if gliding movement then this is mycoplasma if a statile movement okay motility then it is clostridium if dating type of movement then it is vibrio cholerae or compilobacter if swarming on agar plate then it will be clostridium tetany or proteus and if movement is of cork corkscrew or less inflection extension motility then it is spirochet okay so once again tumbling lister gliding mycoplasma very important gliding gliding is very important aesthetically clostridium okay darting vibrocal dye or campylobacter swarming clostridium tetany and proteus okay so these are the most common types of motility now so this is about flagella the next discussion is on fimbri or pili so 
papillae are short fine hair like appendages that help in bacterial adhesion so the first function that is it help in adhesion clear and called as the organ of adhesion so it is known as femur is known as organ of adhesion whereas flagella was known as organ of locomotion which we have discussed a, okay a special type of pili also exists which helps in conjugation so if that uh, pili helps in conjugation then it will be known as sex pili that is sex pilus in okay clear now now one important point i need to mention here though both this term that is pili and femur are interchangeably used but in true sense this fimbrae is that type of pili that helps in adhesion okay the fimbrae is that type of pili which helps in adhesion clear the next important point that pili are made up of protein that is known as pilin flagella was made up of flagellin now they are also antigenic in nature this is very important point pili uh, is antigenic in nature but however the antibodies against pilin antigens are not so protective okay now moving for the next point pili or fimbria are not related to motility and can be found both in motile as well as non motile organism this fimbria and pili is not 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 related with motility okay it can be found in both non motile or motile bacteria clear so these are the important points of the fimbria that is adhesions conjugation um, the fimbria is a special type of pili which helps in adhesion pilin and this is also antigenic in nature and no relation with motility now coming to the next that is types of pili so according to functions according to the functions pili are of two type the first one is your common pili or which we have i have told that is fimbri so you can easily appreciate that its function will be adhesion the second is your sex pili which helps in conjugation so coming to the common pili or fimbri so they help in bacteria adhesion to epithelial surface and helps them in colonization okay uh, and also helps to attach to red blood cells okay leading to hemagglutination and to surfaces of yeast and fungal cells so these are the, all the functions of your common pili fimbri against one again i am repeating they help in bacterial adhesion to epithelial surface helps in colonization hence called as colonization collagenization factor this fimbri is also known as colonization factor because it is helping in colonization attached to red blood cells causing hemagglutination and also to surfaces of yeast and fungal cells so these are the functions of this now coming to some important points about common pili or fimbri so there are six types of common pili classified based on their morphology number per cell adhesive property and the antigenic nature okay there are six types most probably there are six types of you find now they are present in both gram negative and some gram positive bacteria means they are mainly present in gram negative although they are present in gram positive also but mainly in gram negative so these are the important points about common pili coming to the sex pili so they help in bacterial conjugation by forming conjugation tube through which bacterial gene transfer takes place they are thick tubular structure whereas they are common from about thin okay the number of sex pili are less 1 to 10 per bacterial cell okay but uh, this common from pili is about 1000 per cell they are only found in gram negative bacteria so this is again an important point only found sex pili is only found in gram negative bacteria whereas common pili that is fimbri is found in both gram negative and gram positive especially in gram negative uh, once again i am repeating sex pili is only and only and only in found in gram negative bacteria clear no these are the types of pili now we will look for detection of pili how will de sorry detection of fimbri so electron microscopy is the only method for direct demonstration of fimbri there is no any other method only method for direct detection is electron microscopy electron microscopy is the only method for a direct detection of the fimbri clear however there are some indirect methods to know the presence of fimbri such as the first one is your hem agglutination okay many fimbrated bacteria such as e coli clebisilla gonococci okay strongly agglutinated with rbc cells of guinea pigs fowl horse and pigs this property of hemagglutination is a simple method for detecting the presence of fimbri clear in some bacteria the hemagglutination may be especially inhibited by dmenos this is important for mcq point of view that is in some bacteria the hemagglutination may be especially inhibited by dmenos the second method is your surface pellicle so some aerobic fabricated bacteria form a thin layer at the surface of growth culture which is known as pellicle okay so pellicle is a uh, pellicle is a thin layer thin layer present at surface of growth culture okay the pellicle consists of many aerobic bacteria that adhere to the surface by their fimbri clear